this is some really big news that just got announced not too long ago. But Gabriel Matias and Matram have parted ways. Now, initially, we had heard that Gabriel Matias had signed a multi-fight deal. But Brian has more on that, on what you kind of heard about that situation. Yeah, so Eddie Hearn, there's a clip of him in, you know, one of these interviews with one of these channels. And basically, he's saying that they didn't have to move forward with Subrio Matias' deal if he did not get it done in Puerto Rico against Liam Paro, which apparently, you know, that that it, it's a multi-fight deal, but it wasn't really reported that it's a multi-fight deal, including an option, because, you know, reporting in the sport can be flimsy. That's why I couch damn near everything uh, as it relates to, like, what gets announced and what doesn't. Uh, in this sport, you know, we don't have, like, an Adrian Wojnarowski, although he's gone uh sham sharani or chris haynes we don't have people like that in this sport necessarily so with all due respect to the reporters that are in this sport um subriel matias had a multi-fight deal and uh i guess matchroom was able to just opt out after this first fight that he lost against liam paro and now subriel matias is going to return next month on some card in puerto rico uh that has some interesting names on it uh particularly puerto rican names on it and uh, it's going to be his comeback fight and uh he's not going to be with matchroom boxing anymore and eddie hearn kind of left the door open from what i saw in terms of like you know if they're going to do it again if they're going to work together again like they'll see in the future and maybe he beats his next opponent who is roberto ramirez in this fight enough to where he can get another deal like that but he he kind of fucked up a big opportunity <laughs> by getting outboxed at home like here's the thing about it and I kind of get Eddie Hearn's side of this. You have this opportunity because you're building up this guy as the boogeyman. And he looked like it beforehand because he looked it looked like at one point, like, yo, could he actually beat anybody and everybody potentially in this division? And Liam Paro coming into that fight, it was like, you don't want to sleep on him, but Super El Matias, like, you're good enough to beat this dude. You should, right? And then he fights Liam Paro in Puerto Rico. They set it up for him. He has a, a flop performance. Where he just gets outboxed in his hometown. He had some moments in that fight for sure, uh, but it was still wasn't like that close. It was probably eight four nine three in terms of rounds uh, that he lost. And uh, yeah, it, it's tough to like want to move forward after that if you feel like you could. Build. It's not like he's twenty two either. He's in his early thirties, so like to build up to build him back up, like you know, it's difficult at that point. So he's fighting Roberto Ramirez, and Ramirez, if you you know remember, he's. Fought some other guys before, uh, like William Zapata, for example, got knocked out by him. So he's been in the ring with some familiar names, that being one of the sort of main ones here. And we'll see if Super Matias could do what he does, get get him out of there. Because if he does, then ultimately he'll be in another big fight after that. Like maybe he gets, you know, the 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 Liam Paro Richardson Hitchens winner or the, the Jack Catterall Regis Pro Ray winner, like. I would like to see fight, that. Yeah. yeah. Like if he wins this fight and impressively, he'll be right back in the title picture because this weight class is like, it's, 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 it's just like that right now. Like nobody is really overwhelming in this weight class at this point. I mean, it kind of sucks for Subaru Matias, but I think Eddie Hearn laid out a pretty good deal for him. You're fighting in Puerto Rico. You're known as the boogeyman of the division. And it seemed like a lot of people didn't want to fight Subaru Matias. Then you got a hungry Liam Paro who goes to Puerto Rico. And by the way, he's headlining his next fight in Puerto Rico. Against Richardson Hitchens in the title defense. It's going to have a lot of good Puerto Rican fighters on the other yes. card. Yes. So for Subaru Matias to lose the way he did, there were so many things in that fight that were so frustrating where I'm like, why isn't he cutting off the ring? Why is, why is he not being that pressure fighter that we know that he is? And I kind of go back to, was it just too much? Like we're all, was all that attention too much for Subaru Matias at that point? And it might have been because I, he didn't seem like the boxer that I was like known to see. So for me, it seemed uncharacteristic that fight. But Liam Paro is a dog. Like Liam Paro is that good. So that was a very Smart tough too. fight. Now, he's going to have this fight coming up in November. I'm not mistaken. November 9th. That's yes. going to be at yeah Ruben Rodriguez Coliseum. Yeah. So that's a big fight where if Super Real Matias has a great finish, if he makes, if it's a statement fight, then we are probably going to see him against somebody else in the division. Hopefully, 
the winner of, you know, Regis Progray and Jack Catterall, which, by the way, that's going to be a very fun fight to break down as well. Later this uh, month. A lot riding. <laughs> but, Brian, I mean, my question to you really is, I don't know if he would sign back with Matchroom. Like, if I'm Subaru Matias, I'm kind of pissed off, too. Because, <laughs> obviously, there was an option. But if I'm Subaru Matias and, you know, Eddie Hearn's like, yo, peace, we, we're out. Like, you let us down. I'm not going back to match room. Maybe I go to top rank because there's some good fights to be made at 140 at top rank. Remember Teofimo Lopez was saying that he wanted to fight Subriel Uh Matias. That's still a fight that I think could be a dangerous fight, not only for Teo, but I think it could be a good fight for Subriel Matias. I really want to see what happens after this fight for Subriel Matias and where he ends up signing, because I still think he's a guy that will get a lot of eyes in terms of, not casual boxing fans, but boxing fans, I think, still see him as a guy that is still dangerous. He's still a top 10 in, in the 140-pound division. Like, let's not just take him out of there. One loss doesn't mean anything. Maybe top five, honestly. Yeah, you you, um, could, you could still make that argument. That's the thing. Like, like, like uh, let's do this. Uh, w- one, let's, and you're not doing this because you're a proponent of the, the opposite of this. So I'm just saying this to, like, the public. But let's stop writing guys off after one loss. Let's stop doing that. Um, the reason why in MMA you get so many great fights uh, is because they don't write people off after one loss. It's not about protecting the O. Oh, people just go in there and they fucking fight. And that's something that I think boxing could do better at. It's one of the things that MMA has over boxing. I think boxing has a lot of things over MMA, though. Don't get it fucking twisted. Um, but in terms of guys in this weight class, like, all right, Subriel Matias does what he does against Roberto Ramirez and gets him out of there, whatever the case may be, round eight, round nine, round six, round four. Don't give a shit. Like, if we look up and it's like, all right, in April, Teofimo Lopez is going to defend against Subriel Matias. Are we all going to be like, hey, Teofimo Lopez is going to kick his ass? I think you'd be dumb to say that. Like, I think you would be actually, I'm just going to say it. If someone said that, I'd be like, you're dumb. The the margins in this weight class are very small. Like we've seen how many. I think the weight class is a, I think the weight class is a mess because we yeah, don't really know. In a good way. In an entertaining way. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's I, what I mean. Like, like we don't know who the king is of the division. I don't think there is one. I think it's Teofimo Lopez, but we've seen a few lackluster performances from him in recent years. Like it, it, there's been, there's been a number of them at this point, including his last one against Steve Claggett. Like, <laughs> Hey, he's Canadian who fought him very well, by the way, right, Mateo but, wasn't able to get him up and out of there. Like the Jermaine Ortiz one before that. And that like, wasn't his fault. That wasn't his fault though. Cause Ortiz had cut a off the ring. Better, though. To, yes. to, to what you say about like Isaac Cruz and like cut off the ring better. And then like, actually like do, Jermaine Ortiz could have walked out there with the, with the title. If, if, you know, if you just had different judges that night, really, but if he just took more chances or whatever, but like, yeah, I think some of that is on Jermaine Ortiz. Some of that's on Teofimo Lopez too. Like this happens with you against Sandor Martin also. Like how, how many times are we going to have to see it? The last Sandor Martin is such a tricky fight. Like he's had, he's, he's had fight. one, he's had what one performance since Josh moving Taylor. up to this weight class that, that we're like, like Oh, he put it all together. Yeah. Okay. Against somebody think, really good. But I think when you take a look at Teo's resume, this, I don't know how we jumped to Teo from Lopez. He no, has Cause we're talking about 140 resumes. at this yeah. point. Like, And I think people, I have him number one in that weight class, but I would not just be like, he's going to destroy Super Matias. In fact, like I might even put money because Teo's chin, a little bit (laughs) sus at times. I might even put like a small bet on Super Matias to win by knockout. I think I think Teo I think look I think Teofimo Lopez will still probably win that fight because he can he can do what Liam Paro did in terms of outboxing Super Matias but like he's got skill and power but yeah but I'm not, I'm not just gonna yeah. I'm not just gonna write off Super Matias after one loss like all right another one forty pounder if Super Matias fights Devin Haney tomorrow um I I I, I wait a lot the of a, for Super the, a lot of people can't stand Devin Haney so a lot of people are gonna be Oh, Super Real Matias is going to knock him out. Can I be honest with you? Devin don't want to see Super Real. I don't think Devin wants to see anybody who has power right now. He shouldn't no. want to. No, no. Because he now, shouldn't. now we have quite like, listen, the Ryan Garcia fight was the Ryan Garcia fight. We've talked about it a number of times up here. Um, there's a lot of fucked up shit that goes into that fight. And one of the things that we'll have to see how it plays out is whether or not Devin Haney is going to be chinny moving forward. And Subriel Matias and Teofimo Lopez and, you know, guys in this division have power, like, <laughs> you know, yeah. so we'll and, see. 
And um, I definitely agree with Brian. You can't write off guys that have lost or have a couple of losses on their resume. And I think Subaru Matias, if he has a very good performance, we're going to see him in another big fight. You know and what that's Eddie what I want to see. What? You know what Eddie Hearn could do? Because they're going to have Jose Ramirez fight. Your boy Arno Bar, you're so excited for this fight. Jose Ramirez, okay, finally, you have no idea. Dude. Finally fighting Arno wait. Barbosa. I can't wait. So, the winner of that fight, what if they fight Subaru Matias next and like an eliminator? You know, it's like that's a tough. These are tough fights in this division. Leon Paro, Richardson Hitchens, like Ryan Honk said it earlier in the comments. Uh, he he thinks that Leon Paro is going to wash Richardson Hitchens. I don't think he's alone in that. There are some people that think that, but for now, the fight is close to even. In, in terms of betting, but I'm taking Liam Paro, not to wash him. Um, but that's a but good that's I, a that's a good fight that could potentially be really close. Even though, I know people are down on Hitchens right now, though. I'll say that much. Yeah, like I think you could argue that maybe he didn't win his last fight. He did not. <laughs> okay, exactly right. But Listen, I mean, I, I like Hitchens. I've been covering. I covered him early on in his career. He was coming up in Brooklyn, like all those different things. But th this is a tough one. This is going to be a tough one against Liam Paro. All right, let's get to some comments and let's get up and out of here because we've been here for more than an hour. And fun fact, uh, Brian and I only used to get uh, seven to eight minutes to talk about this stuff back in the day, two years ago. <laughs> we would only get seven to eight minutes to do this. Less. So this is why. Awesome By the way, if you like the content, hit make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. And you guys, if you want, you can donate to the show because we could do this more often. Oh, um just saying we do appreciate those we're also toying if you're still here i might as well say this now we're toying with the idea of uh fantasy basketball league uh yes. with us and listeners uh from the show so if you're interested uh let us know drop a comment send us a dm whatever whatever because we're looking to put something together and it would obviously be a money Yo, league. i'm so mad i'm so mad my draft is on the same day as bival and um <laughs> Better be have. And it's literally like an hour and a half before. So that Chris Eubank fight, I'm probably not going to watch. Who does a draft on a Saturday? That, like they voted in this league and Ugh. everyone picks Saturday at 1.30 Pacific time. And I am I was worried. I'm like, well, what if the fight starts at 2? Like, what if, you know, you never know, right? So the draft actually goes by pretty fast. I feel like it's like a half hour tops. Like people make their picks pretty quick. But still, it's like, that's crazy. Like I'm upset that the draft is just before the fight starts. Undercard Boxing says he's taking Africa, meaning Richardson Hitchens, to beat Liam Paro uh, in this fight. Interesting. Yeah. Um, Africa is his nickname for people who don't know. Um, Thank you, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Nerd says 140 stacked good to decent fighters. D didn't even mention Alberto Pueyo, by the way, who had a yeah, great performance a against Gary Antoine Russell. Like, <laughs> How is that going under the radar as well? Teofimo Lopez fights Alberto Pueyo right now. Are you betting Teofimo Lopez with confidence? No, I'm not. Like, I'm not betting anyone with confidence in this weight class. I think Teofimo should win that, but I think people... I think it's close Talking fight. about people being slept on. Alberto I, Pueyo's good. Pueyo, good I, I don't think Teo wins that by stoppage, though. I think he would have to win on the cards. Pueyo's tough. He I, doesn't stop people like he used to. That's for sure. No, I mean, I think there's questions about him being in that in that weight class if his power transcends. Andy Hiroka from Japan, who still ha is still looking for a big ass fight. Like this, this weight class is good. This weight class is, is very interesting. <laughs> very, very much so. I mean, even Brian Norman Jr. wasn't there a rumor that he was in a fight tail? Yeah, there was yeah. a rumor about that. Is he? Is he definitely at 147 at this point? I think so. Uh, well, I believe he, so. Yeah. Well, but he's he, injured. He was supposed to fight coming up. Let me see. Yeah, welterweight. A lot he of Amanda talking, Serrano comments too now. <laughs> he's talking, yeah, he's. I, but I got the impression that not that he was going to come down to fight Teofimo Lopez. That Teofimo Lopez was going to go up to welterweight. Um, yeah. By so the way, I don't know who's winning that fight either. <laughs> that's a tough fight because Brian Norman Jr. is good. Yeah. Like very, very good. Um, but maybe we'll get Teofimo Lopez and Bud Crawford. You never know. Lots of back and forth between those two. Just want to say thanks to everyone that joined us on the show this morning. Also left comments, subscribe to the show, like Ugh. the video. We do appreciate you. Oh, my God. Hustle man, front of the show. Duran Ennis and Karen again. Chukazan. Uh, come yeah. on, bro. I'm not, I don't even think I'm going to watch it live. I'm lying. I am. But we're not doing a post-fight show. I'm no. letting you know right now. We're not. I think Bam yeah. is fighting on that card. I think even he's in a one-sided fight on that card. He is. He is. He is. Because El Gallo and Post-fight show this weekend, though. 
we're, we're, we are doing that. This is, this is a post fight live first one in a little bit. We are doing it for Bivol, better BF. And, um, I think we got to do one for Regis Progray and Jack Catterall though. Yeah. I was one, I was literally about to. to ask sick. Okay. Yeah. Cause we're, we're probably more into that fight than most boxing. Fans. <laughs> I'm really into that fight. And I, and you know, we were talking about one, one sided earlier and me and Brian kind of got into it. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. Like, I, I think I'm going to be extremely biased in that fight. Regis Progray. He has a lot to prove, though, because his performances haven't been good. Yeah, he like, had everyone's a good performance like, in two years. Everyone's like, has he lost it? But he I think you know how I feel about Jack Catterall. Like, if yeah. you watch the show, I think you know how I feel about <laughs> I don't even want to say it, but I, <laughs> I'm i not the biggest fan of Euro-level fighters. Jack Catterall's good, man. He's better than that. But I, and he's a bit, he's becoming a bigger. Fa- he's almost four to one favorite over Regis. Probably People are gonna hate fight. me because I said that. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't care. I I am gonna I'm gonna rock with Regis in that. Fight. I I and I'm probably gonna be wrong. I think Catterall might win that fight after what I've seen, but I'm not gonna count out Regis at all. I like whatsoever. Jack Catterall. I like Jack Catterall. I don't I don't know if I'm picking uh, I don't know what, what my pick is for that fight yet, but Okay. Regis Regis hasn't had a good performance in two years. No, I know, so I know. I just, I just I just can't not go with didn't I also pick Regis to beat Devin Haney? Did I do that? Oh, I think I did. And Devin just made him look like an amateur. I don't remember. It was uh, I think I, I I think I did, dude. I think I did. I, I I'm gonna go. That was probably I'm one of the worst sure shots I, I had. I'm pretty sure I picked Haney. You did. I didn't think it was going to be that bad, but I, I thought you did. I, the, a consensus, everyone was picking Haney. Yeah, I think, it's, but I, that's why I was rocking with Regis because at one point I had him as the top fighter at 140, and then he just had bad performance after bad performance. So I, I'm not going to sleep on him though. Nonetheless, we are going to do the post fight show on Saturday, so make sure to join us right after the show. We're going to break it down, talk about some of the undercard if I'm going to be watching it because it is my mock, it is my draft for. Uh, fantasy basketball and we are doing the league for fantasy basketball from the mandatory if you guys are interested drop some comments uh we will make a league if you guys want to do it brian any final thoughts before we get up and out of here no